So it's five. We can get started. Let me share the screen. Okay, good evening and uh, welcome back. So this is the 35th session we are doing. And uh, today, actually, let's start with the prayer. discussion on the second chapter and today we are going to talk one of the most popular and often quoted verses of the Bhagavad Gita. Of course we had seen uh, the verse 47 in the previous class and today we will just do a quick recap of that verse and we will cover 48 and uh, 49. A lot of you are yoga practitioners, but uh, means you will see in these verses one of the most comprehensive definitions of yoga. So just to pick up the thread, the second chapter is a summary of the entire Bhagavad Gita because the style of the ancient scriptures was usually the first chapters used to give an entire picture of the subject matter of the book. Because at that point of time, there was no printed book. So the index would be the first chapter. In the Gita, the first chapter is the problem statement, but the second chapter gives an entire picture of the topics covered in the Bhagavad Gita. So even in the second chapter, the first 10 verses restate the fundamental human problem that everybody is subjected to sorrow, Everybody is subjected to suffering. And from verse 11 to 72 is Krishna's teaching. And the first portion of that teaching, which is from verse 11 to 37, Krishna is talking about the fact that what exactly is the nature of an individual. We saw that three dimensions of an individual was discussed in detail. There is a physical aspect of a jiva which is known as the stula sharira and there is a subtle body which is known as soul and then there is an atma which is no means subjected to no change the physical body is has a limited duration or the longevity whereas the subtle subtle body has an extended duration and the atma has no birth or death or modification and we saw that why we are subjected to suffering is a wrong self-identification with the physical and the subtle body when our real nature is real atma which is not subjected to any change we try to identify ourselves with a gadget or a tool which is the physical body or subtle body and krishna is saying that only through knowledge this self-identity can be rediscovered. It is already is your identity, but we need to rediscover. So this was the topic that is covered in the first portion. And also in the first portion, Krishna execute, means clearly elaborated the point, point that 
whatever is the cause, there is no legitimate reason for sorrow. So this has been established from verse 11 to 30 from a spiritual perspective and from verse 31 to 33 from a dharmic perspective and from 34 to 37 from means 36 from a worldly perspective. So this was the entire analysis of the first I mean, second topic covered in chapter 2. And then on verse 37, he summarized the entire concept covered from verse 11 to 36. And then he said, so far I explained what needs to be done. Now I need to talk about how it needs me, means why we need to do, what we need to do, I need to explain. So that is what is the second portion. He said, see, how do you rediscover your self-identity? For that, you have to do a practice called yoga. And then he did a little bit of marketing about yoga. He said that there is no loss of effort here and there is no uh, lack of issue with the completeness, etc. And he also talked about that typically people read the scripture and they don't see the need for a focused mind. And also the scripture can mislead you with a lot of, um, lot of worldly benefits. The people who seek the, the heaven and such benefits through the spiritual practice or the worldly practice means people read Veda and think that going to heaven is the greatest thing. Krishna called them as flowery words of the unwise. And then he's established the point on verse 36 that the scripture is useful only to reach a destination. The role of a scripture is only a road map. Vedo Avedo Bhavati. Upanishad tells. Once you reach the destination, there is no value for the scripture. So the scripture, you have to see that only as a means, not as an end. And the role of a scripture is to guide us or navigate to the destination. And once you reach the destination, the scripture is, doesn't have much value. So that is why he explained the point, when there is no water a well in a river but has a lot of value because you have to go there to fetch the water. But when there is a rainy season and the whole place is crowded, with, means it's full with water, what is the value of that well? It doesn't have any value. So once you reach the destination, the scriptures do not have much value. These are revolutionary statements of the Bhagavad Gita. The role of a scripture is properly identified. And the role of the scripture is, or the scope of the scripture is limited only as a navigator. So that means if somebody talks bad about your scripture, you don't have to worry because the scripture is only a roadmap. So those we have seen. And then he started explaining what his karma yoga is because that is the central theme of this chapter. So Anu, do you mind chanting from verse 47 to um, 50, if you don't mind? Yeah. Karmanyevadhikarase Maphaleshu kadachana Makarmaphalahe turbhuhu Mate sangostva karmani Yogastha kuru karmani Sangam tyetva dhananjaya Siddhya siddhyo samobhutva Samatvam yoga uchyate Dure nahyavaram karma, buddhi yoga athananjaya, buddho sharanaman vichha, krupanas phalaheta vaha, buddhi yukto chahatiha, ube sukruta tushkrute, tasmat yoga yajjasva, yoga karma sukaushalam. Beautiful. So let's chant the verse 47 one more time because that is the topic we are going to see. But before that, this 47 to 50 it explains the karma yoga. The essence of karma yoga is explained in detail in the most comprehensive way. We have seen we had seen this last week, but since this topic is very important, and this is one of the most important verses of the Bhagavad Gita, we will do a little bit more analysis on this topic and we will go to the next verses. From 48 to 53, in fact, you will see three popular definitions on yoga. 
what exactly is yoga is brilliantly defined in verse 48, 50, and 53. You will see that. So let's listen to Karmanye Vadhikaraste once again. Karmanye Vadhikaraste Maphaleshu Kadachana Makarma Palahe Turbhu Mate Sangostva Karmani those who don't even know Bhagavad Gita, they quote this verse, even without understanding the full meaning. And we had explained last week that a lot of people misinterpret this verse. How? They say, your right is only on the work. You should renounce the fruit of action, which is just impossible. Some people say you should not have an expectation of the result. That is also wrong. Practically, how is it possible? Imagine tomorrow morning, you are getting up to your car to go to, a, go to work. What is your expectation when you get into the car? The car should start. If you don't have that expectation, that is the most I think Swami Dayananda used this word. Sorry, <laughs> harsh language. He said, this is, if that is the case, this is the most idiotic words given by an idiot, the most idiotic person to the most idiotic person. So that's not the case. So we have to see what exactly it is. So we saw this meaning in detail, right? The first line says, Karmani evaha athikaraha ste. Your choice. Your commandment or your control is only on the action. Second verse, Ma Phaleshu Kadachana. Once you complete the action, you do not have any control over the result. Third sentence, Ma Karma Phala Hedrupuhu. Don't think that you are the author of the result, Karma Phala. Ma Te Sangos Tvakarmani. You are not means if since you are not the authors of the result do not get attached to inaction this is like a sutra form precise concise and gives a brilliant definition of the karma yoga so we had seen several examples last week i saw dropping the phone so let's give take a different example today let's say that you are investing some money into some market so let's say that you have thousand dollars would you invest to the market? Just think and answer me these questions. Would you invest that money to the market if you don't have any expectation on the return? Anybody does that? Think about practically. It's impossible. You are expecting some result. Let's say that you are expecting an 8% return or 5% return. And what you should do, you sh what exactly is in your hand? You can go and do the research. Where am I going to invest this? Am I going to invest this in S&P 500? Or am I going to invest in a stock? Or am I going to invest in some fixed bond or government bond? What exactly is the market condition? How the market is performing? Should I just go with, say, Wells Fargo? Or should I go with the Vanguard? All those information and due diligence, it is in my hand. So that is why karmani evaha adhikara hati. I do have the entire right, entire control, entire choice, how I need to execute an action and what action I should undertake. Should I invest and where means how should I invest? So for example, I can just go and deposit that to a uh, government CD. I may get 1% return. That's completely fine. So I do have that choice. How, what exactly is the action I should take? Should I invest that in a CD? Or should I just that in save, keep that in a saving account where the FDIC insurance is there? Or should I just go and invest in a, in a stock? Or should I even invest in a controlled way, right? In the mutual fund or some uh, S&P 500 index or whatever it is. So that choice is in my hand. So now let's say that you made your investment. You picked up, say, a technology stock. A stock in a company, a startup in artificial intelligence. You believed that, okay, this company is going to go up very high next year. So after you do that, right, how that fund is going to be returned? Is that in your hand? 
if that was in my hand everybody would have been millionaires now so once you invest the money how what exactly is going to contribute to the market how that fund is going to perform it is not in my hand some of them it is in somebody else's hand and some of them it is completely hidden variable so what you have to understand that the choice or control i have is limited to action not the results that is the second line ma phaleshu kada janan you do not have any control over the results definitely your action would be a contributing factor to the result and you do have control and perform that as best as you can so the third line ma karma phala he durbhohu understand that you are not the author of the result if i was the author i would have authored uh, 50 percentage return for my investment why why should i limit to 50 right i should know i should author some 500 percentage if i was the author like suppose i go and buy a lottery ticket if i was the author i would have made my ticket first prize correct so that's the important so you are not the author of the result definitely you are the author of the action and that auction action may have an indirect contribution to the result that's all you can say so you do have control over certain places you do have an indirect control over the results but you do not have a complete control over the results so karmani evaha adhikaraha te ma phaleshu kadajana ma karma phala hedur bohu then what is the fourth clause if you do not have control over the results then what i decide i'm not going to invest the money i'm going to keep that in my saving account what would be your result only that 30 percentage you will not achieve anything so don't get addicted or get connected to inaction because then you are just spoiling the entire opportunity so this is the sutra or this is the mantra for the efficient living so because typically what people does they do you do have control over the action and they do not put lot of effort on that action the only thing you can do to improve your result is do your action to your best of your ability so focus where you have control and leave the rest to god do all your diligent due diligence and do the action to the best of your ability you will expect a result but you do not have an obsession about a particular outcome that's all this is what is the karma yoga is so it is very important to understand karma yoga in this way so karmani eva karmani evaha adhikaraha te ma phaleshu kada jana because somebody wanted me to do the sandhi vicheda that is why all these words are apart ma karma phala hedu phuhu ma te sangaha astu akarmani this is what it means so there are three sentences in this words your choice is in action only never in the results thereof that is the first point second point do not be the author do not consider yourself to be the author of the action so ma phu means ma karma phala hetuhu and then what ma te sangosta karmani do not attach to the inaction this is the three phrases of the karma yoga any question on the verses otherwise we'll we'll go a little bit further down does does this apply to everybody every profession every profession absolutely so every how does the doctors uh, go with this belief doctors go with the bendy belief right because absolutely let's take that example a person comes to a doctor's office where exactly the doctor has choice doctor to has treat a, him yeah or not treat him no yeah but of course means what type of treatment has to be given to that person it is in whose hand doctor sir doctor's hand but once you give the medication whether that patient is going to recover or not is that in his hand no what the doctor can do he can use all the references he can consult with other doctors he can consult with the medical profession he can check the history he can rely on the knowledge from the um, intelligent sources and make the best assumption and treat that's it and then how the means we all know that and that risk is there in the medical field every doctor wants everybody every surgery to be successful but sometimes what happens the problem is where the problem is where what happens is suppose the doctor is anxious 
too much anxious about the result. A normal patient comes to the doctor's surgical room, he can do his job properly where he has control. Let's say that the doctor has to do the surgery on his father. What is going to happen? He's emotionally attached, so he cannot right. do the surgery. So where he has control, he will not be able to do, right? Remember what Karma Yoga tells? You do have complete control on your action. So he may not be able to do. Why? Because he is obsessed with the result. Because he cannot take the other result. So when he is obsessed, what we fail to do is we fail to execute what is in our control, what is in our hand. And when we fail to execute what is in our hand and what is in our control, naturally it will affect the result. So this, if you want to understand this in a detailed fashion, remember the discussion we had on the karma theory. So when we discuss the karma theory, we said that the output, let's say that Y is the output. And that output is determined by, say, multiple factors, X1, X2, and X3, let's say. And what my effort is X1. And somebody else's effort is X2. And there is some unknown result, which is X3. And understand that my choice or my control is only on that X1. So if I don't do that X1, naturally the result will be bad. But understand that even if I do that X1 properly, sometimes these hidden variables, unknown factors, we call it as karma. And that can impact the result. So recognizing this unknown variable, only thing you can do is what? Pray to Ishwara. Understand that the whole result will be created. You are not the author of the result. Understand that Ishwara is the order of the results. That's why the karma yoga goes extremely close with the bhakti yoga. Because when you, do, when you are a karma yogi, you believe in the universal intelligent order of the universe. What is that intelligent order of the universe? Nothing will happen without a reason. So if you do your best effort and in spite of that, you do not get the result. Understand that. Remember that karmic current that is coming. So the prayatna can sometimes overcome it, but sometimes the prayatna may not be good enough. So accept that as the will of the universal intelligence and understanding, with an understanding that, yeah, it's for my own benefit and move on rather than getting obsessed with the result. So this is the essence of the karma yoga. I, I, can, I have to tell you that I had seen this in multiple, multiple leadership seminars, management seminars, quoting exactly the same thing. One book I can refer is, I mentioned in the previous um, Gita, Vedanta class also, Search Inside Yourself, a very popular book written by, I forgot the author's name. It is a Google's curriculum on uh, emotion, means their, their curriculum for the leadership and managers. So this course is offered by Google to improve the productivity of their employees. And there is a chapter on mindfulness. So there, uh, this topic is discussed extremely long, in, in detail. You may see that it could be a copy from Bhagavad Gita. He tells that, okay, if you get attached to the result, you will not get the result at all. So there is a beautiful explanation. Means, I means I have I've quoted a lot of book so far. Uh, but I would say if you want to read one book out of all the book I called, called out, please read this book. End to end, cover to cover, read this book called Search Inside Yourself. This book has a lot of value. And you would see, like I was quoting a meditation technique the other day from uh, Tripura Rahasya. That is big. <laughs> it is there in this book I can call I can show you the, but of course they don't give any credit to any of these books but naturally these sources are coming from these books Bhagavad Gita type books so this verse please by heart this verse karman neva thikaraste ma phale shukata jana ma karma phala hedrubhu ma te sangu stvakarmani so that is the, the, the sutras are highlighted. Your choice or control is only on the action. The word athikara here means only choice or your right. That means right means it is not, uh, it is your control, I would say. The actions you perform, you have complete control or the right. And no control over the result. That doesn't mean that Krishna never said that don't take the result. Did he? No. You have to take the results. But 
you do not have control over it. There is a lot of difference between you renounce the result and saying that you do not have control over the result. Krishna said, you do not have control over the results. That's it. And people, all these half baked teaching, that teaching propagated this as you do not have a choice over the result. So, which is, no, you do not have any right over the result. So, renounce your result. So, go to work, give the salary to the boss. <laughs> go to the, go invest money in the stock market and leave it. No, no result. That is not what it tells. And don't consider yourself as the author of the results. You are the author of your action, not the results. The God or the Ishura is the author of the results. And don't get attached to inaction because prayatna, your own effort is also a contributor to the result. So the only way you can influence the result is doing what you have in your control. So that's why let there be no attachment to inaction. So this is the essence of Karma Yoga. Please keep this, this definition in your mind because we need this in the third chapter. And forget about the third chapter. You need this in the life. This is such a life-changing message. Any other comments? Anybody wants to add anything? Have you ever came across this or any other interpretation? Have you heard of this? Or any, any interesting comments anybody want to share? Rajesh, uh, the book you mentioned, Search Inside Yourself, is that yes. by search, Cheng, in, search Inside Yourself. Cheng Meng Ten. Correct. That, that book. Okay. So, essence of Karma Yoga. So, Karma Yoga's advantage is typically what happens. I'm so much obsessed with my results because I'm so much addicted or confined to my little ego. Why, that, that doctor gets so much attached to his father. That is why he is there. So Karma Yoga gives an opportunity for you to expand from where you are to a higher level. These are all side benefit. Means the biggest benefit is it is going to make you efficient in your activity. It is going to make you stress-free in your activity. So what exactly is this ego? Actually, I came across a brilliant definition on what is ego. This definition is given by three scientists, H.G. Wells, Julian Huxley, and G.P. Wells. These three were British neurologists. So they define this ego as it might be a convenient provisional delusion in the evolution with a strategic value. So this ego it should be there at the beginning of your evolution. But the more you move mature, the more you evolve, these scientists say that this ego will be expanded. Then only you become a human being. So this is not directly related to Karma Yoga, but I just want to show you how, what exactly in the beginning stages of the neurology, this was the thought. So Karma Yoga will help you to expand that. It helps you to accelerate your emotional cycle, meaning the, the growth, the evolutionary growth. It helps you to grow as an individual. Typically what happens? See, if there is a, what is the difference between an auto rickshaw and a, a, a very high, pow, high powered engine car? The auto rickshaw make a huge noise. And what is the maximum speed? 35 kilometers per hour, right? Maximum. Or 60 kilometers per hour, maximum. But a good car, right? A good car, it can go to 150 miles, 160 miles. What would be the noise? zero noise so typically human beings are like that when we do some work we make lot of noise cries and make sure that the entire world oh this is this is how, how all these things will come but efficient work will not come out so silent masters like a vivekananda working nobody knows like the great achievers when you look at them you can see that how they work so efficiently and this is very important. One more, one more observation. I don't know, in India, I, especially in Kerala, I see this a lot. When somebody passes away, people say that this guy was a karma yogi. Like an industrialist in your local time, town. A lot of people, during their, uh, after the death, the condolence message say that this girl fellow is a karma yogi. Yeah, he's a hard worker, I accept. 
But karma yogi means the person who follows this lifestyle. So most of the time, such descriptions are completely wrong. Karma yogi means a person who understands where I have control, a person who is not obsessed with the result, a person who recognizes that lifestyle and stress-free working. So there is a tendency in a lot of people that to equate somebody as a karma yogi who is a hard-working person. Hard, karma yogi is a hard-working person, but not all hard-working person are karma yogis. Please keep that in mind. You need to have that clarity. Got it, right? Got the difference. Excellent. So this karma yoga, Swami Vivekananda has written, we made a lot of talk on karma yoga. So this is the secret of the spiritual progress and the material success. Remember, in the introduction of the Bhagavad Gita, Shankaracharya tells, right? What is this dharma, the, the laws given by the Bhagavad Gita? He said, praninam sachat apyudaya nishreya sa heduhu. A lifestyle that helps the individual to gain the highest spiritual goal, one side. On the other side, achieve their socio-economic welfare. So karma yoga is going to help you to grow spiritually. And also it helps you to achieve your material goal. In other words, it is the secret of the art of living. And our act means it is act with an inspirational mood. <clears throat> so this Karma Yoga was a most favorite topic of two great freedom fighters of India. Mahatma Gandhi and Bala Gangadhar Tilak. Mahatma Gandhi's book on Kama Bhagavad Gita itself is known as Anasakti Yoga. Anasakti Yoga means how to work hard without getting obsessed with the result. That is his entire focus. right? And even in Search Inside Yourself, this guy calls out Mahatma Gandhi. How efficiently he works without obsessed with the result. So that's very important. So Tilak, his Gita Rahasya is mainly focused on the Karma Yoga. So this Karma Yoga is such an important topic. And this verse gives Probably you cannot do anything more on this, but we have to go to the practice of the Karma Yoga a little bit more in detail, which will come across in chapter three and four. Any questions? Any other comments? Beautiful. So please pay attention to this verse and uh, please try to get the full meaning. Means, remember I said I will call out 18 verses and this is one of them. This verse is one of the most important verse of the Bhagavad Gita. This verse is one of the most important, inspiring message for anybody. No modern, modern management or leadership theory goes against this. This is very important. Anybody want to share any experience or comments or any other thoughts on this verse? Uh, Rajesh, just have a quick uh, comment. Yes, yes um, So basically, when you say that, uh, you know, we have to, uh, shouldn't be attached to the results, right? So basically, isn't it something like that kind of non-attachment is what, is it, isn't it a part of that self-realization? Like we don't, we don't, we have to go to that place where we understand we are not the mind, we are not the body, but we are more than that, we are the Atma. So basically, the, the karma yogi has to be a self-realized person. Is that what? No. Again, it is no because as see karma yoga is the first step to that self realization. So right now you are not a self realized master. Still you can practice karma yoga. But I get your question, right? So let's understand uh, two things. One is what exactly is the spiritual path. The first step is, I said, ultimately you need knowledge. Without knowledge, you cannot gain the moksha or the self-realization. Moksha typically is getting identified with the correct self. So how do I know my real nature? It is only through knowledge. But this knowledge, I can, means I'm not in a position to gain that knowledge till my mind is pure and till my mind is stable. So the first step in a spiritual prescription is how do I flesh out all the impurities from my mind. And karma yoga is the means. Karma yoga's goal is anta karana shuddhi, the cleansing of your mind. 
So now you may ask, right? How do you do karma yoga? And we will see that in chapter three. How do you act without, means I would prefer to use the word obsession rather than attachment. So we, in the next verse, we are going to talk a little bit about that. But on chapter three, we will see how to lead, do karma yoga, how to convert your action into a yoga. How do you convert your ordinary action into a yoga spirit? We will see that. So we have to understand what are the different types of karma and what karmas you have to avoid and what karmas you have to accept and how do you perform that karma. In simple definition, karma yoga's definition is it is proper work with proper attitude. In this particular words, Krishna referred about the attitude. But how do you gain that attitude? It is given in the third chapter. So to summarize, karma yoga, yes, means you one need not be self-realized to practice karma yoga. In fact, it is the first set of practice. And how to practice karma yoga, we will see in the beginning of the third chapter. Thanks, Rajesh. Okay. So let's move to the verse 48. Very popular verse again. Uh, this is the first time Krishna is going to define what is yoga. So let's listen. Manu, could you please chant? Yoga Kuru Karmani Sangam Tyatva Dhananjaya Siddhya Siddhyo Samo Bhutva Samatvam Yoga Uchyate It's a brilliant verse. Yoga is defined in the last portion of this verse. Samatvam yoga uchyati. Know that yoga is said to be what? Samatvam, equanimity of the mind. Brilliant and most comprehensive definition of yoga. It is your equanimity of the mind. The stability means the mind that is not uh, siddhi, asiddhi, samobhutva. Like the a mind that won't get extremely excited when you gain a success. A mind that is going to a depressed mode when you get a failure. The ability of the mind to withstand the ups and downs of the life, that mental state is known as yoga. Brilliant definition. So he tells, yoga staha kuru karmani. Perform your action established in yoga. He didn't say that don't perform your action. You have to perform all the action in a different lifestyle, in a, with a different attitude. Yoga staha kuru karmani. Perform your action in the spirit of yoga. And what exactly you have to renounce? Sangam. Without this obsession, Sangam is obsession. That is the definition. Sangam tektwa dhananjaya. He didn't say that bhalam tektwa dhananjaya. He said Sangam tektwa dhananjaya. Perform your action, but detach yourself from the obsession. And then how do you, when you tektwa, means when you renounce the Sangam or obsession, sithya sithyu samo bhoktwa. With the success and failure means you, you be stable. Have a uniform attitude. Don't get too much elevated with the success. Don't get too much depressed on the failure. Because remember, I told you the definition of the popular definition of Vivekananda, who is a successful person. Remember what exactly it is? A person who can successfully face the failure is capable of bringing success in his life. That's it. So, Samatvam Yoga Uchyati. And he defines yoga as this mental state. Again, very popular. I Means Throughout the Gita, you will see five definitions of yoga. And the second chapter is going to give that three definition. Uh, you will see very similar definition, or sometimes exactly equal definition of yoga in the Patanjali Yoga Sutra. So the same definition is given here. So yoga staha kuru karmani, perform the action establishing in yoga. Sangam tektua dhananjaya, Renounce your obsession. Siddhi asiddhi samo bhutva. Like treat, be stable with respect to the success and failure. And this equanimity of the mind is known as yoga. So yoga is not standing on one leg. Yoga is not holding your breath for some time. Of course, these are practices that are going to help you. 
Now you may ask me, right? So when you talk yoga, it's a very generic term. There are different types of yoga. You have karma yoga, you have bhakti yoga, you have hatha yoga, you have kundalini yoga. The goal of all yogas are almost the same. The goal of all yoga is essentially a stable and a pure mind. That's the yoga. So yoga ha samadhihi, Patanjali tells. Yoga ha samadhihi. Krishna also tells in the verse 53 of the second chapter. Samadhi means what? It's an optimal, stable mental state. That's all samadhi. Sama again means equanimity. Sama means equal. Thi means mind. A stable mind is samadhi. A well-placed mental state is known as samadhi. A well-placed mental state is known as samadhi. Right? So sometimes what happens? See, the external events will trigger some chemicals in my mind. And what happens? This external event will trigger some chemicals in your mind and the mind becomes unstable. And when you operate from that mental state, your feeling, your words or your actions will not be proper. And the first step in the spiritual journey is gain control over your mental activities. Comes to the very popular, most popular definition of yoga. Yoga ha chitta vritti nirodha. Ability to control my mental activities is yoga. Sixth chapter, Krishna defines that. Yatro uparavate chittam niruttam yoga sevaya. Ability to control the mental activities is yoga. Yoga ha chitta vritti nirodha. Second sutra of the Patanjali Yoga Sutra. So there is a beautiful story. In ancient China, some one people saw one guy is riding a horse. So the person was asked, where are you going? He said, sir, I don't know. Where the horse is taking me, I'm going. Typically, this is the life of, this is a Zen story, Zen Buddhism story. A brilliant story that connects with yoga. Typically, what happens? Where the mind is taking me, I do it. If the mind is feeling, means telling me to shout, I shout. If the mind is telling me to cry, I cry. Who needs to control? Who is controlling whom? Am I controlling the mind? Mind is a gadget. Am I controlling the gadget or is the gadget controlling me? Am I using the phone or the phone is using me? And look at your own kids nowadays. You know that. How much they are addicted with these gadgets. You don't have to go anywhere. Everybody is telling me the same story. That is the biggest concern everybody has during this lockdown period. So this is the problem. So yoga is a set of spiritual practices. It could be bhakti. It could be karma. It could be hatha. But all these spiritual practice, the goal or the objective of the spiritual practice is what? To gain control over this mental activities. And I was doing a course from uh, New York University. Uh, Gina, I will tell you, this is a good course for you also. This is a course which tells yoga and physiology. So this course is conducted by New York State University. And this is available in Coursera. It's a beautiful course. Um, actually, what it does is it uh, talks about all your physiological component, right? From a cell health, your homeostasis, uh, the stability of the mind, everything, and how the practice of yoga can help you to achieve that stability. What is the biggest, one of the greatest capacity of the human being is that stability. Like there is something in your brain, like there is something in your brain which controls and regulates the temperature, body temperature, uh, something that controls your blood pressure, something controls your metabolism, something controls your, everything is properly controlled. That's the biggest achievement of the human physiology level. That is the greatest achievement. But here yoga goes one step further, like on an emotional level, how do you gain that homeostasis, that stability? That is also means top as yoga. So this scope of this verse and the implication of this verse is far reaching and it is really beneficial. We all should do a lot of practice on this particular verse and uh, uh, we need to contemplate upon this. So let's continue. 
യോഗസ്ഥ കുരു കർമാണി സംഘം ത്യക്ത്വ ധനഞ്ജയ ധനഞ്ജയ മീൻസ് വാട്ട് ദ പ്രൊസസർ ഓഫ് വെൽത്ത് പ്രൊസസർ ഓഫ് വെൽത്ത് ഇറ്റ് ഇസ് എ പോപ്പുലർ നെയിം നോൺ ഫോർ അർജുന ബിക്കോസ് ഹി ബ്രോട്ട് ലോട്ട് ഓഫ് വെൽത്ത് ഇൻ ടു ദ കൺട്രി so a person who generates lot of wealth for himself or the country is known as dhananjaya so krishna tells you brought lot of well external wealth for the country but the greatest wealth is what your own mind so <laughs> he is telling better practice this if you want to be called as dhananjaya better practice it so just this is just by the way because in mahabharata you can see that this context sensitiveness is how the name used in vyasa the name used by vyasa in each of these verses extremely context sensitive so that's why dhananjaya then he tells siddhi asithyo samo bhuktva samaha bhuktva take it equally samatvam yoga uchyate yoga is known as samatvam the equanimity of the mind so the first sentence is o dhananjaya means give up your obsession for the fruits of action and treat siddhi and asiddhi and perform your actions yogastah kuru karmani perform your action sangam by renouncing the obsession then what siddhya siddhyo samam bhuktva treat the success and failure with stable mind and samatvam yoga uchyate this evenness of the mind is known as yoga very popular definition and lot of yoga teachers they don't know these words so that's the interesting thing so this is the first time means you can see the formal definition of yoga in any textbooks so this is one of the most important words so let's go a little bit further perform action being established in yoga and renounce sangha obsessions so at what is this obsession typically i feel that i plus x is going to make me happy i myself alone is not capable of well wellness or happiness i feel that this money or that house or this car or that particular weather or this coffee i plus something is going to bring happiness to me so detachment means what you are not renouncing that object but you are renouncing that x take the notion out from yourself that that x is going to make you more happy it cannot be it cannot be even if it gives you some happiness that happiness will be temporary and i don't have to explain you that you all know that you all know that when you are sick so i was talking to somebody like this is a very sad story like i was in a hospital a uh, couple of years back i had to stay there for a few days for a close uh, family member of myself in that ward i saw a lot of people they used to say if it is a normal life i am so happy so i was telling myself i am so normal right now but am i happy a person who is suffering from corona right now what would be his point of view oh god i don't know i don't need anything if this disease if i get out of this disease i'm happy a person who do not have green card the other day somebody was talking to me oh my god this h1 transfer and uh, h1 renewal is going to be so complicated i would not ask god anything further if i get a green card then i was replying to him if that is the case i would have been so happy now <laughs> that's not i didn't tell him but i was thinking this is the point the married and unmarried wants to get married and the married wants to get unmarried all these means we are not happy with the situations or objects please understand that so the detachment means renouncing that dependency on x not renouncing x but renouncing that dependency so this gives an attitude of equanimity so the evenness of mind what we are talking here is the tranquility of mental composure in facing the pairs of opposite this definition is given by swami chinmayananda brilliant definition the tranquility of mental composure in facing all pairs of opposite 
So defined thus, the term yoga indicates that a special condition of the mind in which it is a naturally in a stable equilibrium state. This is what I was just explaining earlier. Like in the case of human being, your physiology is regulated by the natural, natural evolution. The nature, when you evolved from a unicellular organization or the orgasm to a plant, to an animal and to a reptile and a mammal and finally to a human being, that stability was ensured by the nature. So this therm thermostatus, that state where your body temperature is controlled, the blood pressure is controlled, the metabolism is controlled, no such system like that on the emotional front. And the evolution, the natural evolution of the body may give you, the, give you, give you that strength, but you may have to wait another million years. So this technique of yoga is going to make, give you acceleration, right? You, you can go beyond, you can accelerate your organic evolution. And I mentioned this also in one of the earlier uh, lectures. So after this Charles Darwin's famous paper on theory of evolution, exactly after 100 years, there was a scientific conference in Chicago. So one of the scientists, which I quoted earlier, was Julian Huxley, Sir Julian Huxley. He came there and he presented a paper. That is, his, the whole theme of his paper was, see, organic evolution can take its one stage of evolution. The second stage of evolution for him is, it is called a psychic evolution. It's called a psychosocial evolution. It's the evolution of your mind. And that is what is being told by this yoga. So this is very important. And typically, we are so much attached to this ego. This ego, and uh, sometimes what? You compromise. So you have to follow this yoga. That means you can, your performance will be extremely high in the world outside. So there is a famous story in Mahabharata. There was a king called Sanjaya, not the Tridharashtra Sanjaya before that. And he was ruling somewhere in that Ganthara area, somewhere in Afghanistan. So he got, means he can Continuously, he got defeated in few, uh, like uh, what you call the wars. And he was so depressed. And his mother, you can see such a lot of mothers and uh, wives and sisters in Mahabharata who inspire the people with a lot of such values. His mother, his mother's name was Vidula. Vidula. She gives her a beautiful advice. He tells Muhurtam Jolitam Shreyam. Like, it is better to, sh to like a flame for a second rather than being a smoke for thousands of years. So you perform well. Take the success and failure exactly like and go and face the life. This is the message for all of us. And facing the life courageously and in front of the up and downs, you have to practice this. And the first thing you need to have for practicing this is belief in that absolute universal, intelligent, universal order of the universe. When you know that I'm in his hand, I will not be put down. Whatever happens to me is for my own benefit. Then I will have that control. I will have that um, actually the uh, courage. So naturally you can ask me now. Yeah, on a theory basis, I accept it. All of you tell me, 100%. Theoretically, what you are saying is right. With those, this, this equanimity, I cannot perform well, you will see. But I'm programmed in such a way that whenever I see a situation, my mind goes out of my hand. So how do I program the samatvam in my mind? How do I, what should I, what spiritual practice I should undertake? to get the stability. This is exactly what is the karma yoga practice, which we are going to see in the third chapter. So you have to follow a set of prescribed practice. Nobody is born with these skills. Of course, some people, depending upon evolution, they may have the natural uh, positivity in them. But a lot of time with practice, you can improve this or gain the skill. So, 
um, my folded arms, my request to all of you is before thinking about self-realization, before thinking about anything, please try to gain the skill. Without the skill, you cannot attend the spiritual realization. So the classes Gina is doing on Sunday morning, this is Hatha Yoga. These are simple or med means the pranayama and meditation. So those are very simple practices which can help you in this direction. That is one thing. Second thing is, I'm going to tell you a set of prescribed practice and we do get into the third chapter. Please practice that because the benefit of that practice is this evenness of the mind which will enable you to face any situation. So a couple of more points. So the recognition of this karma means, you see, this is not possible without recognizing Ishwara. As I said, like when you recognize Ishwara, you know that whatever happens to you is Ishwara's prasada. When you see everything as Ishwara's prasada, at least that positive acceptance is there. Typically, a person act or react because of the likes and dislikes. So this karma yoga helps you to neutralize your ragad dvesha. The ragad dveshas will be there, but you can go beyond the ragad dvesha. How? Chapter 3. Like There are specific verses calling this out. So understand God's will. That is one easy way. That's why karma yoga means can be practiced as a bhakti yoga. If you take everything as a God's will, you will not generate this reaction. So then what happens is in Tulasi Ramayana, there is one more quote is there. Tulasi Ramayana, it is said that fools rejoice in prosperity and mourn in adversity. But a karma yogi remains tranquil in all circumstances. A famous quote by Hanuman, who is considered as one of the greatest karma yogi. This is in Tulasi Ramayana. So, a couple of other points. When we talk about samatum, that doesn't mean that you should not have any feeling. Absolutely, that is not the case. So, an even-minded individual can handle it. That's it. So, it's not that your mental state is exactly straight line. It may have ups and downs, but it will be always within that control limit. That is for sure. And one more quote, like there is a British Nobel Prize literature. Um, his, his name is Kipling. So he tells, right, if you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat those two imposters just the same, that means you're tranquil. This is from his poem. Exactly the same concept. One more quote. Parthur Hari, one of our greatest Subhashita person. He has written a lot of Niti Shatakam, uh, etc. He tells, you should be like a son. You should be like a son. What is the greatest advantage of sun? When you look at Rohitji's background, you can see a sunset. When, is, when the sun is rising, what is the color? Red. When the sun is going to sunset, what is the color? Still red. The sun takes its same. First cases, he is rising up. That time also red. And he goes down, that time also is the same color. You should be like that. This is what Prathagari tells. All his quotes are exactly like that. I love these Parthagari's quotes. They're fantastic. Other one I said, right, the other day, like, <coughs> like the world's idea is uh, bully the weak and the parley with the strong. He gives a beautiful example. When uh, the wind is small, when, means when the fire is small, what is going to happen? The wind will put out that fire. But when the fire is large, the same wind which used to put out the fire, it will take you to all the near, nearby houses. So be strong. That is the message. So this Parthagari tells you should be like a sun. The Astamana Surya is also red color. Sun gives the same color. And the Udaya Surya also is same color. So you should be like that. So have this equanimity of mind. And that is what is 48. So we, we are at 6 o'clock. So we can close here. But these two verses uh, are very important. Please contemplate upon that. Any questions, uh, please post that in the group. And uh, uh, any questions? Otherwise, we can have Anu chant the verse uh, one more time. Okay. So, Anu, would you mind chanting verse from 47 to 50 once again? 
कर्मण्येवाधिकारस्ते मा फलेशु कदाचन मा कर्म फल हेतुर्भू मा ते संगोस्व कर्मणि योगस्थ कुरु कर्माणि संगम त्यक्त्वा धनंजया सिद्ध्य सिद्ध्यो समोपूत्वा समत्वं योग उच्यते दूरे नह्यमरं कर्मा बुद्धि योगाधनंजया बुद्धौ शरणमन्विच्छा कृपणास्फल हेतु कृपणा स्थल हेतव बुद्धि युक्तो उभे सुकृत दुष्कृते तस्मायुज्यस्व योग कर्म सुकौशल this is fantastic one more definition of yoga is coming in the next course this yoga karmasu kaushalam ability to identify and perform appropriate action is also yoga because mind you the definition of karma yoga is proper work with proper attitude okay so stay safe and uh, uh, actually let's hope and pray that the situation will become better soon and uh, hopefully we can continue typically we used to stop the class during the summer time but since because of lockdown i think everybody is free right we can continue these sessions okay great yes thank you thanks rajesh thank you rajesh thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.